practice of watching how we're labeling our experience and then going back to direct experience. As you're getting settled, notice what you're bringing in to the practice. We all bring in whatever has been going on in the last few minutes, the last few hours, the last several decades. We all we bring in whatever our experience is. And we know from experience that if we have a mind that's really compulsively turning something over, ruminating, we're probably not going to have as restful of our practice. We would be thinking to ourselves, eh, I don't know about this today. My mind is kind of agitated. I'm worried about something. Or maybe there's a physical restlessness or pain or something. So we could notice right as we start that there's mental activity. And that's just the way one layer of the mind works. We're not trying to get rid of that. There's a part of our mind that's always assessing. So we're looking around, looking for danger. We're hearing. Is there any sounds that would indicate danger? We are using all of our spidey senses. And that is a function of the primitive brain primarily, but it's a good function to have. We need to know what's going on in our environment and what's happening. Are we safe? So sometimes when we start a practice, we'll look around the room and we'll assess that with our cognitive higher functioning mind. Am I safe right now? Is it pretty likely that there will be no physical danger here? I'll get through the practice. My body will be safe. And if that's so, then we could put our mind to rest on that matter. So we don't need to be hypervigilant for danger in the room. We could take a few deeper breaths, relax the body. You might move it a little bit. If there's no danger, you could move around however you wanted. You could breathe as deeply as you wanted. You could do some noisy breaths, whatever you want to do. If you're safe in that space that you're in. And the way the brain in our head and our heart and our gut works, the whole body, mind, sensory perceptions, proprioception works, is that most of those messages are not verbal. So we could look around and say to ourselves in words, yeah, I'm safe here. I could relax my shoulders. I could take some deeper breaths. But then by taking deeper breaths and relaxing our body, we're signaling our nervous system that we're safe. And then our signaling to the nervous system starts to go back and forth. And I can notice that deeper breath. I can notice my shoulders softening, my belly softening. And then everything starts to go in that direction, in the direction of relaxation. And as we experience that, our mind starts to settle. There's less activity in the mind. And you might notice something really specific. What is the softest place in your body right now where there's no muscle tension? Or what does the wetness in your mouth feel like if you move your tongue? What's your perception of cold right now? And if you are cold in your body, you could get something to cover yourself with. That's a very functional use of this part of the mind. Ah, I'm cold. I'll get a blanket or I notice that I'm holding my breath. I could take some deeper breaths. And then when we let those words kind of move to the background, we have the direct experience. We might label something in our mind. That's the second step. 
we might have the experience of the sensation of clenching our teeth. There's a pain perhaps or tightness. There might be an energy there that's not purely physical. And then as you soften that just through your attention, as soon as we notice tension, we're quite likely to soften it. Our body really does want to be relaxed. So notice what happens when you settle your tongue on the bottom of the mouth, your lower teeth, your lower jaw. And when you relax or let come to rest the back of your tongue, your vocal cords. There's the direct experience of that. It's pretty simple. It's not too overwhelming usually to notice the details of that. There's a different sensation in the mouth when the tongue is resting on the floor of the mouth than when it's moving around or when you're holding tension in your tongue somehow. And you relax the back of the sides of the tongue. And then the mind will come in with some kind of observation. It might be just, oh, it feels different, or there's a different kind of sensation when I relax my tongue onto the floor of the mouth. Or there could be some kind of an evaluation or judgment or thinking about. My throat is a lot more relaxed. Maybe that's because I bite my tongue. I don't say what I mean. Or, wow, I didn't notice how much tension I hold in my jaw. And then we relate that back or... You might have a story about that or experiences about that that come to mind. Again, that's just how the mind works. And when we're looking at something so simple, it's a bit more transparent. Bring your attention to your forehead and your eyebrows. Notice the felt sense of your forehead and eyebrows. If you were to move your eyebrows up, you'd have a different experience. Let them settle, that would be different again. And when we sit and watch, we might really be noticing the mind's habits of wandering away. The mind gets kind of bored when we're just sitting with nothing to do, so to speak. So if you're just noticing the sensation in your forehead and eyebrows, your eyes, Watch what happens in your thoughts. And you might be having a a bit of a back and forth between the direct experience and maybe even some quiet commenting. Oh, I'm having a direct experience. Or this is kind of weird, or I'm bored, or could be all kinds of things going on. Or maybe the mind just went somewhere else and you, you notice that you're thinking about something else. And part of the practice is 
not judging ourselves for the habits of the mind. We can get to know ourselves on a really subtle level and we could practice at least neutrality or maybe kindness, compassion. You come back to the mouth and the jaw. What's happening there now? On a sensory perception level, you might be noticing the coolness of your in-breath as it's coming in through the nose and down through the back of the throat, the back of the mouth. You might be noticing there's an energy or a sensation, a feeling in the mouth or the throat. It might be physical, like if we swallow, we can feel that physical sensation. And there might be something that's not as physical, more energy. some kind of a pulsing or a contraction or, or maybe there's nothing there. Maybe there's just the pure sense perception. Notice the sides of your neck and your shoulders. What are the sensations? Can you feel your hair or your clothes? The air, is there a sensation of tightness? If you were to move your shoulders, Move your head around. What does that feel like? What's the sensation of that? If you could move your shoulders up towards your ears and then let them drift back down. What does that feel like? I can feel my shirt as it moves on my skin. Notice what your experience is with that right now. And tune into the sensations in your face again, forehead and eyebrows, eyes, mouth and jaw, neck and throat. Notice the rhythm of your breath if you bring your attention a bit lower into your chest and stomach area. You could also notice the palms of your hands, your fingertips, the space between your index fingers and your thumbs. What are the sense perceptions in your hands right now? And what are your thoughts about them, if there are any thoughts about them?
Notice the whole back of your body coming up your arms into your shoulders, back of your neck, up to your head, behind your ears, through the back of the neck and the shoulders into your upper back, all those large muscles around your shoulder blades and between your shoulder blades. through your mid and lower back, underneath your hips, down through your legs and feet, arms and hands. Notice the whole back of your body. And most often we experience some kind of less than complete surrender into the support that we have. So we might notice that we're holding ourselves quite stiffly, or we might notice that we're pretty relaxed. We've kind of surrendered our body into the floor or the chair. But then there's that more subtle holding ourselves in position. Notice if that's necessary right now. If you're supported through your back, it's really not. We don't have to have any muscle activity, but even if you're sitting up without any support through your back, notice your feet on the floor, support of your seat. And we don't keep ourselves upright through clenching our teeth or having tension in the shoulders. So we could practice letting that soften. Those kinds of things are here for a reason, but it's not to hold ourselves in position. It's related to past fear. It's a habit of the body and the mind. And it doesn't make sense to our cognitive mind that we would be holding ourselves stiffly or we would have tightness in our muscles or we would have a held or a shallow breath. And yet that's what happens all the time. So what do you notice as you let yourself settle? As you remind yourself that it's okay, it's okay to soften and rest. And notice what's happening in your mind. Are you labeling? Are you commenting or judging? Those very natural processes in the mind. And right now we could bring our attention back more into the direct perception. We're softening and relaxing and resting. Right now we're focusing on the back of the body and what that feels like to really settle back, let our energy and our attention be in this moment, in this direct experience.
And bring your attention back to the whole of your body. What's your direct experience of your body? Because our bodies are made up of physical things, bones and blood and joints and skin and tongues and fingers. And we have a physical body. And we have energy and sensation feelings in our body. Our mind is located in our body to some extent. And often when we look for the experience of our body, images will come in. Not everybody has a very visual mind, but some people might have an image of your body as it's sitting right now, as it's positioned or as you're lying down. If there is any kind of pain or dissatisfaction with your body, there might be thoughts about that. And we can notice those and let them move to the background. What is your direct experience in a sensory perception level right now in your body? Notice the space the space that your body is occupying, the space around your body, the sensations in that space. Experience your body as space. And if your mind wants to think about it, see if you could let that move to the background. We're just having a direct noticing or a witnessing of our body. Part of that is sense perceptions, sensations, energy in that location. Let all of your thoughts move to the background as you experience it more directly. And then open your eyes and look around, continue to be witnessing your experience. Notice the colors and shapes. If you move your eyes or move your head, there will be that sensation too. And it ups the level of activity in our brain when we have our eyes open. Makes it more likely that we'll be thinking and we're looking around. That's part of the way the brain works. And notice what your experience was this last several minutes. It's okay to let your brain, your mind evaluate your experience. Was it boring? Was it interesting? Was it frustrating? Was it whatever it was? It's okay to notice that too. 